Oh, what's in the news this week? Germany is the new West Virginia. Canada, 20% vape tax. U.S. Post Office cannot make cigarette equivalency for vapes. Pandemic increases smoking. Exploding black market. Garage Lab vape products. Indiana, 25% vape tax. Illinois vape ban. It's game over, man. Don't these politicians know their laws are killing people? I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, vaping news, science, and advocacy report for the 23rd of April, 2021. The featured story of the week goes to Germany because it's trying to be the new West Virginia. This story comes from welt.de, which translates to world.germany and is located in their economy planned tobacco tax section. Electronic cigarettes are not tobacco. Anyway, the e-cigarette tax will be a feast for smugglers, more smugglers, and counterfeiters. Let me remind you, once again, this story comes from Germany. Yes, Germany may soon be facing a new ridiculously exorbitant vape tax because the Federal Ministry of Finance is urgently pushing for the new tobacco tax law. And it had its first reading in the Bundestag which is Germany's lower house of parliament. The German law definitely contains some explosive taxes, just like West Virginia's budget did. While moderately increasing tobacco cigarette tax, e-liquid prices would increase per bottle from 5 to 13 euros, effectively tripling the tax rate. How much is this tax, you ask? How about two cents per milligram of nicotine starting in July and then doubling to four cents per milligram in 2024? For everyone in the States, I need to tell you that in Germany, they buy their e-liquid in 10 mil bottles. So think about how many bottles you could fit into a suitcase or even your coat jacket. Now let me present you with the fact that in Poland, the same bottle only costs three euros. What do you think is going to happen if this tax gets implemented in Germany? The exact same thing that happens in West Virginia. Vapors are going to go across the border and buy large quantities of e-liquid to scalp when they get home. It's called the black market, people and the joy of capitalism. Meanwhile, cigarettes are only expected to cost one cent more per cigarette. With the way they tax nicotine in Germany, it's no wonder the German people love their big rebuildable tanks. Moving on to Canada, the Canadian Vaping Association commends Saskatchewan on its balanced vaping regulations. Yep, they're happy that the health minister, Paul Merriman, introduced the 2021 Tobacco and Vapor Products Control Amendment regulations, praising it for being balanced and fair. Daryl Tempest, are you kidding me? Yes, I understand 45,000 Canadians die from smoking-related injuries and illnesses. And this accounts for 21% of total deaths in Canada. But for the average vapor, a 20% tax is three times what they were paying before. And the only ones who are truly going to be happy with this new tax are the tobacco companies who are going to see an uptick in smoking rates in Canada. Moving on to Malaysia, more British American tobacco Malaysia, 
is worried that many of its customers cannot afford to buy legal cigarettes because of the high taxes and the COVID shutdowns. So what is BAT Malaysia doing? Well, they're pushing the government to focus their efforts and stop the black market. So cigarette taxes can fund the economic recovery. They're also pushing for the government to expand the tax framework for vaping products to include nicotine-containing e-liquids, which make up 97% of the market, arguing that this is going to ensure consumers have access to alternative products that are of a known quality. Are you kidding me? During the pandemic shutdowns, Vapor SO Cares program was handing out food and water all around the globe and not once asked their customers for anything. But here, BAT Malaysia sees its profits fall from 347 million to 242 million, and now they're asking their government to tax the shit out of their competition. How pathetic can these big tobacco CEOs get? Oh. Coming back to America, how about the U.S. Post Office finally published updated rules for the treatment of electronic cigarettes in the mail, and they have no hope of being able to enforce the law because, see, they know that ends are materially different and can't figure out a way to translate 12 packs of cigarettes into vape products. So here we are once again, the Postal Service must, and I quote, promulgate regulations to clarify the applicability of the prohibition of mailing cigarettes to end no later than April 26th. But here they are. They have no idea how to deal with it other than just ban it all together and ask people for more comments. This is what happens when politicians make knee-jerk reactions enact stupid laws about something they know nothing about, and then they expect others to enforce those laws and end up killing more people than the problem that prompted the reaction in the first place. All this is going to do is drive more people back to smoking combustible tobacco, just like the pandemic did. Yep. Even in the UK, where vaping is regarded as the holy grail to end cigarette smoking, pandemic lockdowns and not including vape shops as essential services obviously pushed people to not only go back to smoking deadly tobacco, but it also made them light up more than they did before COVID even existed. A new research study of 2,000 British adults found some 10% started smoking again, and 30% of smokers reported lighting up more than they did before COVID. Stay on topic, bonehead! All right, all right, all right. Another study was just dumped for viral news media consumption to spread and disseminate all over the globe. And it says that illicit garage lab vape products may be driving lung injury in rural Appalachia. Guess they think that people are going to ignore that this study was conducted using a volley patients from August 2019 to March 2020. And I'll bet none of them were using nicotine e-liquid. Guess the West Virginia University School of Medicine needs Bloomberg to give them some cash to fund the research department. So Sunil Sharma decided to clickbait his colleagues with this WVU hospital's case study. Just when you think the whole of volley crap is all behind us, someone has to reuse the remaining fear to foster their agenda to get more cash. Kind of like how teen vaping is being used all across the country to enact more stupid laws. In Illinois, their state senators are now making it illegal to sell or distribute electronic cigarettes and vaping products marketed for children. 
Hello! It is already illegal for children to vape. It is already illegal to sell or distribute vaping products to kids. It is already illegal to market adult products to children. Why do you need another law to stop illegal activity? This is just another preemptive way to get legislation started that has nothing to do with changing behavior or solving a problem. It's only going to result in additional taxes and criminalization of flavors. You mark my words, that's what they're looking forward to. That's what they're marching towards. Just like in, in Denver, Colorado, where a pediatric lung specialist admits everyone, including teens and young people, are dealing with higher rates of stress, anxiety, depression, but then blames flavors as the reason kids are vaping. She says that electronic cigarettes are sold in over 15,000 flavors, and 83% of kids who vape used flavored products. I've seen this study before. Why aren't they questioning how 17% of the kids are using unflavored products that don't exist anywhere on the commercial market. There is no brand out there selling unflavored e-liquid for vapes. So you decide what the hell they're talking about, and what they're using. And why are they focusing on the flavored products that are needed for adults to stay away from combustible tobacco? Well, it's not all bad in Colorado. Loveland Council nixes flavor ban from anti-youth vaping law. And thanks to Andrea Sampson, the council realized that they just wasted the last two years of the council's time arguing the ineffective slippery slopes of prohibition. Fortunately, she realized individual liberty and responsibility trump everything. And no elected official has the right to take this away from law-abiding adults especially those who need the safer alternative products to stay away from combustible tobacco. Well, it's not the same in India, where their budget debates have led to a 15% tax on the retail sales of vaping products and a 25% tax on closed system cartridges. Interesting how the push for a $2 per pack tax increase on cigarettes is not moving forward in the Senate. But taxing the safer product is now inevitable. Meanwhile, the American Journal of Public Health figured out the obvious. Well, you know, a plus from the pandemic is that fewer kids are using electronic cigarettes. And it's for obvious reasons. Lack of access due to lockdowns and shutdowns preventing everyone from getting access to the safer nicotine products. But it didn't stop people from going to their local corner store or their gas station and getting combustible tobacco, well, that's always going to be readily available. But you want to vape? Oh, sorry. Don't believe me? Here's another study showing that vaping is safer than smoking and vape products offer significant harm reduction potential. And I know, I know, we're running out of time. So I got an opinion piece asking, how can so many New Zealanders still smoke? And flavor bands, another piece that says flavor bands won't fight tobacco or improve health. All they do is increase cigarette consumption. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. First story of the day. Featured story for the week is that Germany is now becoming the new West Virginia. The e-cigarette tax will be a feast for smugglers, smugglers, and counterfeiters. That's the title of the piece published in Welt.de. Be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. You're going to have to translate it if you don't speak German. And it says, if the new tobacco tax law gets through, smoking electronic cigarettes will be more expensive in Germany than 
anywhere else in the European Union. Yep. And the police expect massive expansion of the black market. The profits of the criminals will be enormous and their risk is going to be minimal. Mm-hmm. Big freaking surprise here. And it's finally happened. We knew that this was this was not limited to just where you live. It is not limited to just your country, just your county, just your state, just your province. This is happening everywhere. This is a global threat that's taking place to tobacco harm reduction. And now Germany is the first country to see this catastrophic damage being done because they are trying to propose a ridiculous tax. And it doesn't sound like much. Two cents per milligram. Okay. Until you factor in how many milligrams are actually in your e-liquid. You see, in these big open tank systems that are very popular in Germany, you're only using three milligram, maybe six milligram of nicotine to stay away from combustible tobacco, right? But if you have a mouth to lung device, you're probably using a much higher milligram concentration, 20 milligrams, or in the case of the jewels, 40 milligrams or 50 milligrams or 30 milligrams. And that is milligrams per milliliter. So you have to factor in how many milligrams are actually in a bottle of e-liquid. So you get yourself like a 60 mil bottle like this and the 60 mil bottle with six milligrams is 360 milligrams of nicotine. Then do the math and figure out your taxes. You get a hundred mil bottle and do the math. Well, see in Germany, they buy their e-liquids in little tiny 10 milliliter bottles like you might see in an occasional gas station in the United States. Except in the United States, you're buying some shit juice that the manufacturer probably doesn't even know how to properly make. So he just grabs some VGPG, adds some shit flavor to it, and markets it with whatever flavor component is in it. And it might not even taste anything like the flavor profile on the label. You're better off making your own. Because at least then you know what's going into it. And none of this ridiculous freaking tax that they're trying to implement all around the world. And here we are in Germany. They're going to be the most expensive country in all of the European Union if this tax gets implemented. Because not only is the tax being implemented, it's already set to double in price. In two and a half years. Unbelievable. The ignorance that these politicians have. They see money and they don't care about how many people are going to be killed when you implement this tax. Because people are going to take a look at their choice. A consumer is always going to look at the choice of the prices of the products they have before them. And they're not looking at the long-term health consequences of it. The tax increase that they're proposing here is only going to increase combustible cigarette tax one cent per cigarette. 20 cents per pack of 20. 25 cents for a pack of 25. But e-liquid is going from five euros for a 10 mil bottle that somebody's using in a day to now 13 euros for that same bottle, almost tripling their cost, over tripling the taxes. This is gonna have a catastrophic effect on public health in Germany. Let's move on. There'll be a link in the description if you want to read the actual article. How about the Canadian Vaping Association is commending Saskatchewan on its balanced vaping regulation. Why are we applauding the assholes that are in elected positions when they come up with these ridiculous laws that prevent people from jumping shift to the safer alternative product? 
Here we go. Thank you, Daryl Tempest. You want to pat Saskatchewan on their back for enacting this lovely new tax law. Uh-huh. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to actually read the contents of this consolidated change to the tobacco and vapor products control regulation laws in British Columbia and Saskatchewan. Because it's not limited to just one province or one area or one territory. This battle is being conducted in every single state and province and every single location all around the world. And you don't realize it until after the damage is done. So if you are not active and you are not your own advocate, don't be surprised when these regulations slip through budgets to enact new restrictions on your access to safer products. Yeah, here we have another article. In Battlefords Now, Mayor hopes that the 20% vape tax might deter users deter users from using the safer alternative product and force them to go back to burning combustible tobacco because it's going to be cheaper than the safer product. And that's not the only place where they was published. Oh no, we got Yorktown this week. New tax measures about to hit vaping sector. Big surprise. Big slap across the face. New tax of 20% of the retail price of all vapor products and devices will take effect in Saskatchewan on September 1st of this year. Legislation to implement the vapor products tax was introduced today, and they already know when it's going to be implemented because there is no significant opposition to this. There hasn't been people standing up and saying, hey man, no flavor bans, no more taxes. You've already taxed us to death. No, people are just laying down and going, oh, what are we going to do? You can't lay down. You have to fight this. You have to be proactive. You have to contact these people and let them know that you will not stand for this. All vendors of vapor products will be required to become licensed by April, I'm sorry, August 31st, 2021. With the VPT vendor's license, in order to report and submit the VPT collected. Thank you. Have a nice day. No more provincial sales tax. We thought that was bad enough. We talked about that before. Well, now it's been replaced by the vapor products tax. 20%, 20.5. Mm-hmm. Cough it up. Thank you. Have a nice day. It's even worse over in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. British American Tobacco Malaysia expects level of illegal cigarettes in the country to remain high. Mm, wonder why. Wouldn't have anything to do with the exorbitant taxes that are placed on these products and how it disproportionately impacts the lower members of society, the lower income people of your country are struggling to survive and you just keep jacking the tax up on them. Keep making it more and more expensive for them until it gets to the point where they're either forced to deal with, well, do I eat? Do I feed my family? Or do I continue with my addiction that I have? Because that's what it is. Cold, heartless, ruthless CEOs need to have their money insured so that they can collect their six, seven figure incomes and, you know, make a profit for their shareholders. But the common man, pff, sorry for your luck in life. Sorry for your lot in life. It's just the way it goes, man. Cough up the cash because these rich bastards, they need your money and the government needs their money to operate so that they can, you know, hand out contracts to other big wealthy individuals. Forget about the small business anymore. There's no such thing anymore. As far as the government's concerned, you're a nuisance. Yeah. And what is British American Tobacco doing? 
need I remind you in the introduction, I told you about the Vapor So Cares program that during COVID was handing out food and water at various vape shops all around the world, especially in Europe, never asking their customer for a damn thing. But here we are, British American Tobacco, well, they saw that their profits have been shrinking because of the COVID pandemic in Malaysia. So, well, we're going to need to do something about this. What do we do about this? We'll just get the government to tax the shit out of our competition. Yeah. Vapor products? No, we need to tax them. We need to expand the tax framework for vaping products to include e-liquids with nicotine. Mm-hmm. More taxes, because if we drive the taxes up on vape products, well, then they're going to have to come back to smoking our uh, deadly death sticks. And our pockets are going to get lined, and our shareholders' pockets are going to get lined. Who cares about the number of people that are going to die? Move on. Especially fired up. It's just, I keep hoping, you know, find some good glimmer of news, some hope, something that, you know, people are starting to realize what's going on and what is what. The facts, the science behind electronic cigarettes, behind vaping products, and how they save people's lives. No. It's not what I find. And here we are on the imminent deadline before the United States Postal Service to come up with rules and regulations dictating whether these products can be shipped or not. Is there an exclusion for businesses to be able to ship to businesses? Is there an exclusion in the case of, let's just say, God forbid, some idiot company had some schmuck working that decided that he was going to tamper with these products in the assembly line when they were making it. And when they mix these big, huge vats of stuff, let's say, God forbid, that he dumped arsenic into the batch and it got out there and started killing people. Well, the normal route when a hospital comes up with something like this is to take this bottle and send it to the lab, which is part of the federal government, in order to determine what is in this product, to go after the manufacturer and to put the warnings out that are required to save people's lives. Well, the post office understands that in that event, this should be able to go into the postal system to get sent in to determine what is in this that is causing people to die. But looking at these regulations, they're confused. They don't know what to do. These are preliminary rulings so far. And they're still asking for people to comment on it because they don't know what to do. They understand that these products come in all shapes and sizes, and it is physically impossible to determine what's in the packages that people are mailing. So they have no hope whatsoever of being able to be the police for this new law in preventing online sales of electronic cigarettes, the Children Act accomplished nothing. All it did was make lives harder for law-abiding adults who just simply want to stay away from cigarettes. It's that simple. That's all we want. But no, we're going to ban the shipment of these products, make them extremely expensive because now you have to have private couriers to do the deliveries. And I'm curious to see how long it's going to take for me to get my order. Because the last time I ordered from Element Vape, it still came through the post office. But because the deadline is this weekend, when's my stuff coming? Where's it going to come? Who's the one that's actually going to deliver it? Because it's not coming from X. X going to give it to you. Yeah. And I've already seen countless posts, people complaining, they placed their order, it got shipped with X, and they don't know where their package is. No more two, three-day priority mail. Mm-mm. It goes into their system, and it gets shipped across the country 
through their distribution channels. And if they don't happen to have a truck coming to your town, I guess you're just going to have to wait until they do. How about I stay on topic? I bet you guys would appreciate that. So let me scroll right down to the very bottom. And um, it says that ends are not packaged in such standard quantities as traditional cigarettes. Wow. Can you come up with anything more obvious than that? Nope. Ends rely on devices that can be used in an open-ended fashion with potentially limitless, limitless quantities of liquid-filled cartridges. Uh-huh. And only one segment of the electronic cigarette market uses cartridges. The rest of it uses liquid sold in bottles of all shapes and sizes. Why? Because it uses readily made, readily available four ingredients go into this. Essentially, you have the VG, you have the PG, and it's the highway to health. And you use flavorings to keep the adults interested in it and not interested in smoking cigarettes. And then you use the nicotine to make sure that their addiction meets its needs. Or when they're using it as a coping mechanism for the stress in their life and the anxiety in their life or the depression they have, or the Parkinson's, or any of the other things that benefit from nicotine, it's in there. Very simple recipe. Four ingredients. And they know that. And they have no idea how they're going to enforce this law. Because unless the consumer reports to the person when they go to mail their item, there's no way in hell they can determine what's inside somebody's package. This could be e-liquid for an ENDS product, or it could be a hand sanitizer or lotion or a sex lube or anything else in the world. There's no way for them to know when somebody ships this product unless they can determine that the person is a vape shop. And well, what else is a vape shop going to send? So we're going to need to make sure the vape shops can't send anything. But it's not going to stop the black market. It's not going to stop these teenagers from going and buying it or getting it and then shipping it to their friends. We talked about that on the news before, too. No, they don't understand. They think that they can just pass these laws and poof, all done. It didn't change anything except make it a lot harder and a lot more expensive for adults. Well, I'm here to tell you, the United States Post Office is still looking for somebody to tell them what to go do with itself. Yep. And these are tentative, and they were going to change once they come up with a final rule. They have another 30 days. They're basically extending the deadline, which is against the law, because Congress put it in the law that they have until April 26th to come up with something. Well, they just published this. On the 19th, extending it another 30 days because they need to figure out what to do and they don't know what to do. So how about some more obvious? Pandemic stress. Smoking is helping out big tobacco. Stress smoking. Mm-hmm. And this is research that was done on 2,000 British adults last fall. And more than half of the cigarette users were stress smoking more than before the pandemic. And 10% started smoking again after already giving it up. And 30% of smokers surveyed reported lighting up more regularly since the outbreak. And they have the statistics. Remote working made it easier to take a smoke break. And this is all around the world. This isn't limited 
to the country that thinks that, you know, electronic cigarettes are the saving grace that will end combustible tobacco. Be a link in the description below. You can check it out yourself. Because here comes the next smear campaign, the next propaganda. Garage Lab vape products may be driving lung injury in rural Appalachia. Mm-hmm. And we can thank the West Virginia University for this lovely piece of crap that's now being viral media published all around the world. Yep. Vaping liquids made in illicit garage labs in Appalachia could be proving deadly for some users, new research suggests. Included 17 patients in rural Appalachia. 17 Evoli patients in rural Appalachia. Care to guess how many of these people were using nicotine e-liquids? Zero. But they're not going to tell you that part. They're going to tell you that uh, researchers found that in addition to nicotine, vaping liquids used by three most severely ill patients contain higher levels of toxic, volatile, organic compounds such as formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, acetone, propylene glycol, and cyclohexane. Well, they should find propylene glycol in it because that's one of the primary ingredients that go into this. And... Whether you like to admit it or not, formaldehyde is one of the processes, one of the byproducts that happens when you take vegetable glycerin and you heat it to a vaporized state. But there's OSHA safety requirements for this. You know how many tokes you would have to take on a vape to reach the OSHA safety limits for occupational exposure? You'd have to vape an entire bottle of e-liquid in one day. A 120 mil bottle of e-liquid in one day for you to reach the OSHA occupational exposure limits. Mm -hmm. Or you could just push the fire button, disable the auto safety shutdown, and just toast this entire bottle, this entire e-liquid in here. And you can get a lab meter to tell you that, oh man, the, the levels are so astronomical, but no reasonable person would just sit here and breathe in this thing as it's doing. In order for this device to function, you have to move air past it. And if it's moving air past it, guess what doesn't happen? I mean, that would be like doing a research on a piece of steak, okay? And you just take the steak and you burn it. 100% of the way through until it's nothing but carbon. And measure all the gases that are set off by burning that piece of steak until it's no longer but a piece of charcoal. And you're going to find the same volatile organic compounds because it's a part of the Maillard reaction. But I'm not going to get too far in depth in the science because most people don't give a shit. Moving on. So wasn't published in just one place. Oh, no. We can thank West Virginia University today for starting this snowball, this chain reaction that's going to take viral media by storm over the weekend, or at least it hopes to. Whether it gains any traction or not is anybody's guess. I think people are so sick of a lot of stuff. Maybe it won't take anybody's attention. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of obvious that uh, Sunil Sharma, the chief of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine at the School of Medicine in West Virginia University, wants to get his colleagues all fired up. Uh-huh. Maybe his uh, department needs a cash infusion. And he's hoping that if this gains some traction, maybe Bloomberg will throw him some cash because he's throwing it everywhere else. Move on to Illinois. Illinois Senate approves bill banning vaping products marketed toward children. Another ridiculous law banning something that is already illegal and will have zero impact on these kids. But it is going to affect 
law-abiding adults from accessing a safer alternative product. Yep. And it says right here in the article, you may have seen ads for vaping products that show cartoon characters directed towards kids that want to try vaping. I don't see any vaping commercials anywhere. Anti-vaping commercials, I see plenty of them. But I have never in my entire life seen an ad for vaping products, let alone one that showed cartoon characters. You know who's using cartoon characters to teach kids about vaping? The anti-vaping propaganda of the United States. Government funded a contract to make a cartoon about vaping. What a better way could you possibly come up with to teach kids about vaping? Make a cartoon about them. Let's move on. I'm not going to get into that conversation. That's a whole, that's a whole separate video in itself. Let's move on to Elizabeth Blackwell a school nurse at Boulder's Fairview High School who's seen with confiscated vaping paraphernalia at school. Uh-huh. And this picture was taken back in 2018. But here we have an article that was just published, an opinion piece saying, flavored products are driving the teen vaping epidemic that doesn't exist. Unbelievable. You can take a look at the link yourself. I'm not going to get into it because we are going to move on to Loveland Council nixes flavor ban from anti-youth vaping law because they sat there and they deliberated over this and it got brought up. Everybody's like, oh, no, you as, a, as a vape advocate, you can't be talking about other stuff. You can't be talking about you know, weed and the prohibition of that or a prohibition of alcohol. And you need to stay focused on vaping and you need to tell people, you know, just your story about vaping. Who gives a fuck? Nobody really pays attention anymore. It's like a big circle jerk. All of us that care passionately about this are sitting here stroking each other's backs going, yeah, you're doing a good job. Who's, who's hearing this message every week? It's us. The users of these products are the watchers and the consumers of these videos. There's hardly ever a time when you have somebody that doesn't know anything about this that actually picks up one of these videos, regardless of who makes it, and actually watches the content to learn something about the, top, the, the subject. That's why if you've ever watched when people are doing live streams and you get some anti-nicotine person that shows up in the chat, they're encouraged to stay so that they can learn. But 99% of the people that are in that chat already know the benefits of this product and already know from firsthand experience how it got them to give up smoking. Well, here we have a councilwoman who actually decided that, you know what? We don't have the right to infringe on adults' rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It goes against the very foundations of what this country was started on. And if you get into the slippery slope of banning this and not banning this, you're going to end up like New York, where it's perfectly legal for you to go and purchase marijuana. But if you want a flavored e-liquid, to help you stay off of smoking, sorry, that's against the law. Fortunately, she got them to see her point of view on this. And Loveland Council nixes the flavor ban from the anti-youth vaping law. Moving on, we're going to go to Indiana. Indiana public schools and teachers are cheering for the funding increase in the new state budget plan. Where are they getting this money from? You wonder? Well, <laughs> the new vaping tax. Congratulations. 
The new tax would charge 15% on the retail sales of vaping products and consumable materials and a 25% tax on wholesalers for closed system cartridges. The previous Senate-backed plan for lower tax levels has been lambasted by health advocates, of course. And the Indiana Chamber of Commerce is being inadequate and far below the state cigarette tax. Yeah. How is it that the these people can sit there and compare it, the cigarette tax, to the vaping tax? But we have the federal government, an agency of the federal government, the United States Post Office, that cannot come up with an equivalent cigarettes, e-cigarettes. How do we compare to make them so that they're equal, so that the exception that's already in the law that allows somebody to mail 12 packs of cigarettes up to 10 times a month can have a substantial equivalent with an electronic cigarette? These people obviously can see a correlation, but the federal government can't. Moving on. Another obvious article, a plus from the pandemic is the fewer kids are using electronic cigarettes. Yeah. How about a minus from the pandemic is, is the fewer adults are using electronic cigarettes. And because of the vape mail ban, well, I know a bunch of people that were either thinking about picking this up and says, I'm just going to stay on my cigarettes or a bunch of people that just started using this and they went back to smoking cigarettes because they can't get these anymore at an affordable price. Let's keep on vaping like our lives depend on it because they kind of do. Well, here we have the article. A plus from the pandemic, fewer kids are using electronic cigarettes. Well, imagine that. They put the whole country into lockdown so that people don't spread the virus. Well, when they shut down all the stores... What you had is what you had. And if you don't have a supply because you weren't stocking up for the PMTA threat that was already in place, well, when you ran out, what did you do? Well, you went on the local convenience store and you picked up a pack of cigarettes and you started smoking again. No surprise. What do these kids do when the friends that they were getting these things from couldn't get access to it because... The store that sold them that stuff or the trip that got them a stockpile of stuff that they were able to sell to their friends and social acquaintances no longer had any and the stock dried up. What happened? <laughs> then they couldn't use it. Study published by the American Journal of Public Health comes out and states the obvious. Mm-hmm. Moving on to a bit of science. We've talked about this before. Vaping versus smoking impact on cells is compared. Another study done. Another study reconfirming what we already know. There is far fewer toxins emitted out of these devices, even on the worst day than is emitted in a single cigarette when it's burned. It's the reason it's 95% safer. So we have somebody here in New Zealand that's befuddled. And he says, how can so many New Zealanders still smoke? And you have to wonder about that with the impending regulation changes that are going on over there. We already converted half of the smokers in New Zealand. Vaping has already converted half of the smokers over in New Zealand into using a safer product, a harm reduction product, and got them to completely quit their combustible tobacco habit. And you wonder how so many New Zealanders are still smoking? Take a look at what they're doing when these vaping regulations, even in New Zealand, look at what they're changing the vaping regulations now. Yes, I understand that they are making legitimate efforts to cut back the availability of combustible tobacco. However, when you have a product that's literally in every single corner shop across a country, 
and and compare it to a product that is only available in a handful of stores, if your town isn't very big, you're lucky to have a store. And it might be a two or three hour drive for you to get to a store for a safer product. But how many stores along the way to the vape shop are you going to pass that has access to the traditional combustible tobacco, but they don't factor that into these regulations and these law changes. They're just looking at it and trying to do something so that they can get more votes come next election. Well, here we have an opinion piece asking, why, why, why are people still smoking? Reducing the number of retailers able to sell tobacco and limiting the nicotine content of cigarettes? That's the next agenda. It's happening in the United States, too. They're talking about forcing manufacturers to reduce the nicotine that's in, in, in combustible tobacco. I didn't know this, but when I started smoking, how many decades ago? The cigarettes that I were smoking back then, you could get just plain tobacco cigarettes with no fillers, no additives, no sprays, no nothing added to them. It was literally just tobacco. The cigarettes you see in the store shelves nowadays are not just tobacco. The tobacco manufacturers spray the leaves of the tobacco with all kinds of chemicals to ensure that their users and consumers are addicted faster that any side effects you would have from lighting up tobacco and burning it are mitigated because it numbs your airways so that you don't cough as much as you would if it was just plain ordinary tobacco. They literally spray ammonia onto those products and the leaves and they literally change the pH of the tobacco. It is no longer tobacco that people are actually smoking nowadays. And you wonder why people are dying and people have so many health effects from it. People have to have their limbs amputated because it affects your circulatory system so much so that your body says, I'm shunting all blood flow to my extremities. So you get to gangrene and then you have to have an amputation. Have a nice day. They don't care. They're still making their profits and they're still attacking the safer alternative products and using their political influence to get politicians to do their dirty work. You can take a look at that link in the description below and you can see and find out why so many New Zealanders are still smoking. How about another opinion piece? Stating the obvious. Flavor bans won't fight tobacco or improve health. Yep. Yeah. COVID continues to ravage America's health and economy. Connecticut's politicians have finally set their sights on what really matters now. Flavored tobacco products. Mm hmm Bridgeport. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Calling for a ban on flavored tobacco products. Mirroring similar proposals in Maryland and California and existing bans in states such as Massachusetts. Another. Another ban. Yep. They're saying that the ban is on flavored tobacco. Well, according to federal law, this is now the exact same product, even though it isn't. This is a tobacco cessation product. But nobody in their right mind is going to admit that. says that these bans are going to cause untold damage to small businesses and their workers who are already struggling to stay afloat due to the pandemic. It's the exact same thing we've seen in countless other locations all across this country. While delivering windfalls to contraband smugglers, they'll also drain policing resources amid increasing crime rates. And contrary to claims from politicians such as Senator Marilyn Moore, they're likely to disproportionately and adversely impact smokers from minority communities rather than help them. Once again, stating the obvious. Is this senator going to listen? Well, 
If you live in Connecticut, I highly suggest that you get a hold of her and tell her your story. Tell her what you think. Electronic cigarettes, colloquially, colloquially known as vapes, are at least 95% less harmful than combustible tobacco. Vapes are also widely recognized by eminent international health authorities, such as the British Royal College of Physicians, New Zealand's Ministry of Health, and France's National Academies of Medicine and Pharmacy as evidence-backed smoking cessation aids. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. These products need to be determined to be a smoking cessation aid. Because even with the existing regulations and even with the existing vape mail ban, there already is an exception for smoking cessation aids. If this was determined to be a smoking cessation aid, you could even go on to Amazon and buy it. And that's why in the UK you can. Well, I'd be surprised if any of you are still watching this. This has been a very ranty episode and it wasn't my intention. However, when you come across and you do the research for this news every single week, you keep coming across the exact same themes and the exact same scenarios and it is being played out in cities all around the world. It is not limited to your location. It is not limited to where you think things have already been settled because there are cities and states, just like we talked about in Colorado, that are reversing previous decisions that we're hurting people. And if you advocate for this and you bring attention to this, there's a chance that things can improve. But we need more people to join the army, to join the fight against this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report. It is the 23rd of April, 2021. The United States Post Office has three days to come up with final regulations. And they just published this in the Federal Register saying that they're going to extend the final rule another 30 days. So if you haven't already sent the post office your comments on the matter, if you have any ideas on how the post office can come up with an equivalency between a regular pack of cigarettes and electronic cigarettes, please let them know. Otherwise, they're just going to simply buy it all together and you will have no access other than waiting for X who's supposed to get it to you, but is taking their time. The new reality in the United States of America is you can no longer purchase vape stuff and get it conveniently delivered to your house in a reasonable amount of time. The only way you can access these products is directly person to person in a store. If that store has enough business to stay in operations. Yep. And if you're willing to pay the exorbitant taxes that are now being imposed in all different kinds of states all around the country, that's the sad reality of today, April 23rd, 2021. So become an advocate, stand up for your rights to safer access products. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. I'm sorry for being in such a ranty mood. I think um, once I get everything situated here and get things finalized and move everything over into the new studio, that I'm going to take on a little different format for our vaping news, science, and advocacy. Because I know it's asking a lot of you guys to watch this, especially when it's in excess of an hour sometimes. So look forward to those changes coming along. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you again next week.